Okay, so here we are with the canopy final prepped for starting our fiberglass layup. A uh, few details related to that, just to highlight them for you now before we get started. Uh, gotten everything out of the way that uh, you know, might interfere with our access. We, we no longer need our, our weights we had taped on to hold everything down. Canopy is actually well bonded on from the, the filler. Confirm that you've got uh, good protection for the canopy, that there's no plastic that's been pulled off or exposed to where you might accidentally get some resin on it. We've added some masking uh, to areas of the forward skin on the canopy frame that uh, we don't purposely want to have any, any resin or fiberglass on. The treatment that we have uh, for right beside the edges of where the layup is going to take place uh, using the references from the construction manual and, and the templates as far as the location is two layers of vinyl electrical tape. I recommend that you use uh, some good quality like 3M, uh, not something really cheap from uh, the dollar store or something. Uh, you, use some good quality tape so it's got, got good adhesive and uh, it will be durable. So we've got two layers here, and then a third layer of masking tape that is going to be a sacrificial layer that we're putting in place so that while we're doing the layup, we don't have to worry about whether we get any resin up onto the tape. Right at the point that we just finished the last layer and we're, we're ready to leave it alone and finish curing, we're going to pull that layer of tape. What that will do is that will leave us a dry uh, layer of tape to sand to when we start doing the finish sanding. It's a lot easier to tell when you sand down to the tape layer or, or tape level if, there's, if you're not sanding through resin to get to that point. So that's what the masking tape will be for. We'll be, we'll be pulling that off. When we do the layup, we'll be trying to just align it just right up to the edge of the tape, but not lap onto it at all. So a little overview of what's next. We're going to be cutting out all the glass cloth and having that ready ahead of time. Once you start, uh, you're using resin that cures, and you don't want to be having to go back and, and cut more glass cloth. The first layers that we put on, we will be applying wet and we'll give you details later on how that uh, totally works. But the idea as we described before is to put that on uh, with tinted resin so that uh, that's what's visible from the back side and we will be uh, applying that and then letting that cure up just slightly so that we don't draw any of that resin out as we add more glass cloth. So uh, let's switch over to cutting some glass and getting the final preparation done. Oh, by the way, uh, this has also been all uh, finished, cleaned, and wiped down uh, as we did before so that there's no contaminants on the surface from our, our final finish sanding. Okay, we're ready to start cutting some fabric cloth. Uh, what we use here in our shop as a cutting board is actually a very old drafting table. I can't say for absolute certainty, but I think this may have actually been Van's original drafting table. It has a little bit of history to it. But it's, it has a uh, soft surface uh, to cut through to uh, the reason that's valuable is you want to get a hold of one of these. It's a, a rotary cutter for uh, cloth fabric, available at you know fabric store, yard goods stores, uh, where, where people buy uh, fabric for uh, making their own clothing, that type of thing. Uh, it's the exact same cutter that they use. It works great on fiberglass cloth. It's basically just a circular razor blade. Uh, that, that rolls in the handle 
and it can be retracted uh, when you're not using it. So having a surface that that will work on um, is um, what's going to make this process a whole bunch easier. This will be very difficult to do if you're going to try and do it with the scissors. So we rec recommend one of these and something to use as a cutting surface. Uh, there's cutting mats that go along with these. Some of you um, may have a significant other that already has these tools. You might be able to sneak when they're not home. Uh, you can work out something with that. Uh, you don't have to get um, the mat that goes with one of these cutters or something like we have here. Uh, a brand new smooth sheet of MDF uh, medium density fiberboard actually will work well as a cutting surface. It's really smooth, it won't, won't catch the fabric, um, but it's just soft enough that with, with pressure using the cutting tool, uh, it will cut through the glass cloth and leave little teeny cut lines in it, so you probably wouldn't want to use uh, that surface for you know, any furniture or anything after that. But, uh, the boards aren't overly expensive. In some home supply stores, you can even buy uh, smaller pieces instead of buying a full 4x8 sheet. You can just buy a 4x4 four four foot piece and use that as your cutting surface. We're going to need a straight edge, uh, at least 36 inches long. Uh, just a scrap piece of aluminum that's been sheared straight we're using here, uh, but any, any type of straight edge that you can use uh, for referencing a straight line while you're cutting will work. Uh, one of the uh, fat Sharpie pens uh, works well on cutting the cloth. Um, tape measure and or a ruler and a scissors that's, that's sharp and will do a good job cutting the cloth. Okay, so we're ready to start cutting our cloth. Uh, we're going to start with the straight strips that are going to go across the center front portion of the windscreen. And those are going to be cut parallel to the weave, uh, mainly to simplify it for uh, somebody that's not experienced with doing a lot of work with fiberglass. Uh, there won't be any tendency for the width of the cloth to change um, as it would be if we cut on the bias or uh, diagonally to the, the weave of the cloth. The benefit to doing that is that it doesn't unravel nearly as much and it stays together but, but it's, it's expandable and stretchy and it won't hold its shape. So the only pieces that we'll be cutting that way will be backing them up with some plastic sheeting uh, so that they hold the shape we want. So for cutting the strips, uh, because we don't want them to unravel badly, it's important to try and get the strands within the weave in a straight line so that we're, we're not cutting in and out of some of the, the strands and having it unravel badly on the edges. Way to do that is to use our straight edge and one of the mill edges on the cloth, that's where, that's where it's fuzzy, uh, that's where it hasn't been cut off of the roll. This, is, this was the edge of the roll uh, from when it was woven. And we want to use a straight edge and as best we can get the cloth lined up. And you can kind of use a fingernail or something to pull it into alignment with the straight edge and take some time to try and get it lined up as well as, as you can get it. You can hold the straight edge down to keep some of it from moving and then pull other areas. And once you've got that pretty good, weight it down and smooth the cloth out going away from there. And that should get all the rest of the, the weave aligned and straight. If 
You may have to come back to it a couple times and adjust and re-smooth it out again, get it all smoothed out so that it's ready to start the cutting process. Okay, so we've got our cloth all laid out and uh, the, the weave all straightened out uh, using the straight edge. Uh, by the way, the, the cloth that we're using here is just a, a common e-glass weave fiberglass cloth in about a 8.5 to 9 ounce weight. And what, what that means is that that's what the weight of just the raw cloth in a yard uh, cut length is. So this is about eight, eight and a half to nine ounce. It's what's commonly referred to as boat cloth um, in, in a lot of uh, industries. Uh, we don't need anything super special, uh, high strength um, or specialty we use for, for this. So just uh, common boat cloth uh, is just fine for this. Uh, it seems to generally come in about a 50 foot wide roll so if you're buying a, a yard which should be probably enough for this project you'll have a piece that's about 50 inches by 36 inches so we'll start off using the straight edge by getting rid of this mill edge After you cut, pull kind of slow, and if you find any place that there was a, a thread that didn't cut through all the way, I've got a little void in my table, or cutting table there, then you can, you can go back and, and recut that. So we're starting with the narrow strips. So the first one is a quarter inch, and these don't have to be highly precise just just so that it's close uh, fiberglass layup like this isn't high precision for tolerance that's what the sandpaper is for so we'll be able to you know finish sand everything to the contour we want or right, we're just trying to get it close so it's just setting up the straight edge Then you can set those aside, hang, hang them over something uh, as you cut each one. Use the chart that's supplied in the construction manual that gives you the cutting schedule for how many strips you need and what width the strips need to be. And get those all pre-cut in advance. Okay, we finished cutting out all of our straight pieces and now we're ready to use the supplied paper patterns to cut the curved pieces that we'll use down on the sides. To help these maintain their shape uh, while we're installing them, uh, since they will be put on dry, we want to cut them so that they, as much as possible, still parallel the weave uh, of the cloth. So I uh, want to line it, line it with the, the weave of the fabric and hold it in place using a rotary cutter. Just follow the perimeter of the paper template as close as you can. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, uh, just so that it's close. Sandpaper will go a long ways towards uh, finishing all the shape and the contour when we finally get to the finishing process. Okay, so we've finished cutting our first two pieces. I cut the paper template, 
uh, back to the line for the smaller pattern and then cut two more pieces of that size. All right, we're ready to cut our last pieces of glass. These are actually gonna be the first ones that we are going to apply uh, using a little different process than all the rest of them will be. And because of that, uh, we wanna actually cut them at this point a little bit big for what the paper template is. So you, you can cut around the perimeter maybe with an extra quarter, three eighths of an inch or so. Uh, to allow for a little bit of shifting in shape uh, while it's handled and getting ready to do the final cutting. Final cutting will actually be done uh, with it already saturated with resin and re ready to ply. So it, uh, just follow the same procedure that you used uh, with the other pieces, only just cut a bit outside of the, of the pattern and make two pieces this size. Okay, cut out our other two pieces using the patterns and carefully folded those up and set them aside so that uh, their shape didn't get dis disturbed too much. And then I uh, cut off some of the excess cloth uh, so that we have a straight edge to work from. And this last piece, we want to cut on what's called on the bias uh, with the cloth, which means we're cutting the strip at about a 45 degree angle to uh, the main piece of cloth so that all of the, uh, the threads that are woven in are going diagonally at about 45 degrees uh, through the piece. And that's going to make it much less likely to, to fray and, and come apart on the edges because th this is going to be our first piece that's going to be forming the finish edge of, alongside of the uh, edge of the windscreen where our tape is. Uh, the position that I had the, the other patterns in previously uh, where I cut them in the corner that was also situating those so that they were somewhat on the bias and you should do the same thing with those because uh, we want to try and have a, a nice edge on all of these. So this, this is measured out to be about two and a half inches by uh, about uh, 28 inches or so and that will give a little bit of excess uh, for cutting it to final size once we have the, the resin infused into it. Let's go ahead and cut that up and just roll it up carefully so it's not going to get disturbed uh, and you won't stretch its shape because as I mentioned before uh, the cloth cut in bias if you pull it lengthwise or width widthwise uh, it will change the, the shape and the dimensions of the cloth. All right, so I've cleaned up our cloth where we don't need it anymore. We're done cutting pieces and uh, freed up our cutting board or whatever you're using for cutting. And I've laid out a piece of uh, plastic food wrap, uh, you know, static cling wrap, uh, it's oftentimes called. And we're gonna use that as the carrier for our fiberglass pieces. Uh, when we have uh, them already infused with resin. So I'm going to start out with the strip that I cut. I rolled it up carefully so I wouldn't change the shape of it. We'll lay that out on here. Try and get it in a straight line. And then the other two pieces we cut using the paper pattern. have enough room for it to fit on the plastic. It 
so that you won't be getting resin off onto your cutting surface. So that has them all ready to, to start applying the resin. So we'll, we'll get some mixed up. Uh, basically the same process as was used uh, for the filler, though we won't be adding uh, glass bubbles or the, the micro balloons this time. We'll just be using straight tinted resin. Now once again to review, this is the first pieces that we're putting on that are going to be against the canopy surface and would be visible from the inside side of the canopy. So that's, that's why we're applying them this way so that we can pre-apply the resin uh, that's already been tinted uh, with the, the tint so that uh, it'll look a little better from the inside. Okay, so we've got a batch of resin mixed up. It's, it's had just a little bit of the dye added to it. This is about uh, oh, three quarters of an inch to one inch in the bottom of a 12 inch or 12 ounce cup. So that should be enough to get these pieces pretty well saturated. Now I'm going to start out by just pouring, pouring on the cloth. We'll let it just start soaking in just a little bit so that it'll get stuck to the plastic once it's soaked through to the other side so that they're not sliding around. expensive uh, brushes and don't generally put a lot of effort into cleaning them other than uh, just during one work session like we're going to be doing now. If there's going to be a pause for a little while like there will be. Uh, you can use acetone to clean the resin from the brush and just leave it soaking in, soaking in there until you need to use it the next time. You can see that it started to soak through. You have to be really careful about doing much brushing action. What it's mostly is more of a stippling action or pushing the resin down through. Particularly until you get quite a bit of it saturated so that it's keeping it stuck to the plastic and you won't be pulling it around and pulling it out of shape. Okay, so we've got some resin on there now. Also taped down the corners of the plastic. I'd forgotten about that before, but that helps keep things from sliding around. You can see it's quite a bit saturated out, but, but it's actually a bit on the heavy side. This is where a, a plastic Bondo type spreader uh, is useful. You can just work it through. We don't have to saturate right to the very, very edge. Just remember, we, we cut these pieces a little on the big side, and we're going to use our paper template to finish cutting them to final size after we get it all saturated. So we've got our cloth pieces all saturated. Now what we want to do is take another piece of the plastic wrap that we used uh, underneath of them and we're going to apply it over the top. And 
missed the end just a little bit there, so we'll just have to add a tiny little piece possibly. Okay, so that kind of encapsulates our pieces. So now we can lay our pattern in place, cut with the cutter around the pattern to the final size, and then we'll have finished cut pieces that we can handle without uh, the shape getting distorted or messed up. Okay, I've got the first piece cut out. Uh, I've cut the second one. right through the plastic, through to the opposite side, and I'm trying to just go slow and cut very close to the perimeter edge of the paper so that the finished cut piece is pretty close to matching the profile of the pattern, but once again it doesn't have to be absolutely a perfect match. We're just trying to get it somewhat close. Okay, so here's our three pieces all cut out. Uh, did the, the long one with a straight edge to the, the specified width uh, that's in the plans. Now these two were cut uh, with the pattern from the same side, so it's not really a left and right if we peel the plastic off uh, at this point. So you'll have to pay attention to that as you apply them onto the airplane. That one's going to need the plastic off of one side to apply it, the other one off of the other side. So the, the way this process goes is um, we're going to move these to a location that has some, some paper so that we don't uh, mess up a surface uh, from the resin that squeezes out from handling and we're going to peel the plastic off of one side when we're ready to apply it. The plastic on the other side will still help it hold, in sh hold its shape while we set it in place. We can move it around uh, on the, the canopy a little bit, uh, get it in the proper position and then we'll be peeling the plastic off of the opposite side. Uh, when we get there, we've already pre-applied a very light coating of the, the same resin that's uh, been dyed with the uh, pigment, uh, so that's, that's already on the surface and, and ready for these to be set into place. Okay, so we're ready to install our pieces. I've got them laid out here so that we now have a left and a right. See the, the straight narrow strip the two pieces is coming in from opposite sides. So this one will be on the right. When I peel the plastic off of this side, this one will be on this side. So this is probably the trickiest part. But if you can just kind of bunch it up on the edge, get the plastic to start coming off. The plastic on this opposite side is still holding the shape really well. And I'm just going to set it in place. Now what we're most concerned with as far as matching up to the tape line is the tape line on the top or the one that's going to be our finished edge onto the canopy. You want to push right up next to it, but not overlapping onto it. So if anything, there should just be just a tiniest little bit of gap there. It's not going to matter if it laps onto the tape down here because we can just sand that away but it's, it's much more difficult to sand it away uh, 
down to the surface of the tape on the canopy layer without accidentally going through the tape as we're sanding. So that's why we, we just want it butted right up to the edge of it. Now it is a little bit stiffer with the plastic applied. So you can just kind of get it in the general location that it needs to be and then work at getting this layer off. Pull it back on itself, not out away, and that'll avoid pulling the laminate or laminate piece off of the canopy. Now that it no longer has any plastic holding it in shape, we can use a brush and we can even push it around to line up the, the aft edge here or if you need to make any adjustments along here, it'll be a lot more flexible as far as changing shape. I'm brushing out just a little bit of a heavy spot right there, but avoid brushing side to side because that will just grab a hold of it and pull it out of place. Use more of a stippling action, just pushing it down to make sure that it's fully seated down on the surface and there's no big air bubbles. Okay, so we've got both sides on now. So I'll peel the plastic off of our straight piece. We'll add that to finish. What we want to do is just butt it right up to the the side piece and if you need to it's okay if it overlaps onto it a little bit whatever portion that's necessary and then we're cut with a slight amount of extra length Just take and cut it while it's wet. Just somewhat close so that it overlaps just a tiny little bit. Uh, it's very easy to, to sand level just a small little bump for a short distance. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of other irregularities that type of thing that we're going to be sanding out anyway, so uh, that won't that won't cause any problems. So get it so that it's lined up with the edge of the tape. Uh, remember, a tiny little bit of gap visible is better than lapping up onto the tape, um, particularly because we have the sacrificial piece of masking tape on there that we're going to remove at the end. Uh, we don't want to be pulling threads of cloth uh, while we're pulling that off, so we don't want it lapping up onto it. So now I'm going to get a hold of the edge of the outer layer of plastic. Remove that. Once again, now it's a lot more flexible and you can use a brush to push it around a little bit to any last adjustments. Then at this point, after you've worked all the air bubbles out and there's no voids, I'm pretty sure there's no voids underneath. 
and you have to work quickly because it's been a while since we uh, applied the resin and it's going to be starting to go off. We're actually going to pause and let this somewhat set up before we start adding any more layers. And the reason for that is, is we want to make sure that this stays well infused with the tinted resin so that that's the color you see on the back side. If we started applying anything at this point, uh, the resin would actually kind of dilute and dissolve what's here now and, and you'd, you'd lose some of that hiding property. So we're going to let this uh, cure enough to where that it's, it's starting to get somewhat solid but still tacky uh, so that we can begin laminating with, with new resin uh, onto it from that point. Uh, the reason for that is it's my recommendation that from this point on you don't use tinted resin. Uh, that'll be uh, your choice. Uh, you can if you want. Uh, the reason being is that the tinted resin, because it is opaque, you can't see into the layer of cloth that you're applying and you can't tell whether there's voids or air bubbles in it. With this first layer, that's not really a factor because uh, we're, we're not liable to have, have many as, as long, long as you work it down onto the surface. But we're going to be putting on a lot of layers and we, we don't want to leave, leave any big bubbles or voids that when we sand are going, going to open up and, and be an integrity issue uh, for the, the whole layup. When you use the untinted resin, uh, it makes the cloth somewhat translucent and it's very easy to see when there's, when there's a bubble still there that you need to work out. Uh, so th that's going to be a decision you have to make. My recommendation is that uh, this one layer of gray is going to uh, take care of the aesthetics well enough uh, that you can just use uh, regular resin for the rest. Okay, we've uh, taken some rest time to let the, the initial fiberglass layup uh, cure up a little bit. It's definitely still a little on the sticky side but it's not at all wet uh, or to the point where it'll allow any of the, the cloth to slide around, shift around anymore. So uh, we've got that well, well sealed and the integrity of the, the gray tint will be maintained. So now uh, we, we start uh, filling in that uh, thickness that we looked at earlier uh, using the radius template. We've got all of our strips laid out here uh, ready to go and we will just start laying them in uh, one at a time and layering in uh, untinted resin as we go just keeping all of the cloth saturated. So we'll be starting with the, the side pieces and getting those wrapped around uh, to the point that they they meet where the, the front pieces will be and then those will be uh, kind of overlapping onto them. We'll show you the details of that and what to be looking for uh, as far as developing the shape uh, when we get to that point. Okay, we've got our first uh, side piece laid in place. This is the, the bigger of the two that go on the sides. and. It'll, it'll uh, easily stick because the resin is still tacky, so you got to be careful laying it down. You're not going to want to put it in place and try and pull it back up because uh, one, once you touch it, it's pretty much going to be stuck there. So you just want to be you know, looking at the edges. Once again, we're not so worried about uh, how it overlaps to the tape down here. Uh, we're looking to make things somewhat even uh, along the, the edge where it's going to interface to the, the clear part of the canopy. So I've got this one on, the one on the other side, and we're ready to uh, place a piece here in the center. So if I grab our radius template again, this will give us another view of what we're trying to fill in with the fiberglass. 
here and here is where we're contacting but we have a large void or open area in the middle so we have to start filling in the middle first and slowly work our way out in width until we get out just short of the outer edges now if you look that continues back into here even where this piece is so these these first skinny strips that we put on across the middle of the front it's gonna lay out onto this you just have to visually look at where it transitions from kind of an abrupt corner going out into a flat out here and we're going to progressively shorten the strips as we add thickness so that eventually we have something similar to that all the way out into the center. Okay, we've got our first layer uh, wetted out with, with resin. I can kind of see what I was talking about. Since we're not using uh, tinted resin, you can uh, see the yellowish hue of, of the cloth. It's, it's turned the cloth from white uh, to the resin color. And th that, that's what the, the plain resin allows you to to see as you're wetting it out when, when it's fully wetted out. Uh, otherwise there'd be white blotches and white spots uh, where it hadn't saturated fully. So what we're gonna do now is right down here in the corner and if you look on your frame before you actually start doing the layup, you'll see that there's a drop off from the metal skin onto the canopy because of the way the canopy fits there. And we want to make sure that that's filled in so that when we do final finish sanding, uh, there's, there's not a, a real abrupt change there. So we can just take little scraps of cloth, cut a little triangle shape, and because it's sticky, it will stay in place. And I can just lay it in there and then cut off the excess. And we can watch as we uh, work towards the, the final finishing after some resin's been put over this. If we're still seeing much of a bump there, we can just put in one more piece uh, just so there's some, some fiberglass material there uh, to allow us to finish sand it at the end. Okay, so we've laid the, the second side layer in place. Uh, since we're laying it into uh, wet resin, you can see it's already soaking some of the resin up uh, from the previous layer. But I'm going to start adding some more. And once again, as I was talking about before, we don't really want to do too much brushing in the traditional sense with the brush because you'll just start pulling the, the glass cloth around and changing the position. So I'm just kind of patting the resin on. Uh, if you find bubbles or there's places where it's sticking up, you can kind of stipple with the end of the brush, particularly on little pieces like the little triangle we added here where we don't want to move it around. I can just dab it in and that will force resin down through the weave. It may look really irregular right now, uh, but to a large degree that's what sandpaper is for. So uh, don't get too worried about that at this point. I'm seeing that it looks like we'll maybe add one more little piece there before uh, we get through to the end, uh, but we're going to continue on with just getting the, the, all the main layers on first, and we'll, we'll do that at the end. Okay, so we've got about three of the narrow strips on the upper front here now, 
you can see where it's overlapping onto the side pieces slightly uh, back to the point where there's still somewhat uh, a sharp indentation or corner from where the canopy uh, meets the skin uh, but we're starting to fill in that area a little bit uh, to where there's not nearly as pronounced of a, a deep spot where the corner is so now we're going to be starting to add some some wider strips to start filling that in once again you can see uh, the difference of where the the cloth has been saturated well enough or not it has a whitish appearance so we'll be adding some more resin there uh, the other places where it's a little darker that's just where some resin has uh, soaked up from below uh, and that that's the advantage of the untinted resin we wouldn't be able to see that if the resin was gray or, or it would be much more difficult to be able to see so we'll add some more resin, keep going with some uh, progressively wider strips and slowly work our way towards uh, filling in that, that gap on our template. Okay, we've got about uh, six layers on there now and I've actually just added another narrower layer uh, than one that we had put on just based on how things we're looking at with the template here. So you can see it's starting to fill out pretty well. We're just trying to keep things even. Right here in the center there's a little bit more gap so we may even take a narrow one uh, just put right through the center. Uh, just have to kind of keep looking at it and seeing how it, how it goes. Yeah, it looks like Right about there, we'll put uh, another one of the, oh, about five-eighths of an inch wide strips to fill that out after we wet this out, and then back to another wide one, and we'll see how it looks as we're coming up near the end. Okay, so here's the second to the last uh, widest strip that we cut, and using the template, now we can see uh, how close we're starting to get. Uh, when you get down to the end, it may not be absolutely perfect to your four inch radius because we've got a little bit of extra thickness built up down here that's gonna sand away when that becomes a feather edge and that'll effectively lower the whole height of the template and close up that gap. A little bit the same up near uh, the interface to the glass when that gets feathered out. So this is looking really good. Uh, it's variable a little bit across the width, uh, but once again, uh, that's one of the miracles of fiberglass and sandpaper. We'll be making a sanding tool uh, to sand it to a uniform shape uh, and get rid of some of those variations. So keep working at it with uh, use of the different width tapes. Uh, maybe didn't emphasize it before, but once you go to a bigger uh, or wider width piece, you don't have to not put narrow pieces on anymore. As you've seen, uh, we've been checking it with the template and gone back and, and put on a couple more narrow strips just to kind of fill in a, a low spot uh, right down the middle. And then when you go back to the wide strips, it'll bridge over everything, kind of fill in the voids with resin, and it'll look pretty good. Okay, we've applied our last layer, or, or the widest layer, besides that, that one that we'd put on uh, ver at the very beginning with the, the gray tint and the resin. These last two layers that went on uh, were offset just a small amount from the tape, the second to the last, maybe about a quarter of an inch, and this very last one is about an eighth inch back from the edge of the tape, and then with our original first layer being right up to the tape. So that's gonna give us a kind of a, a nice feather um, blend coming off the glass where our finished edge will be. You can see with the template, worked out really well. 
out here on the sides where there's uh, still a bit of uh, outside radius along the shape of the canopy. As we come inboard a little bit, start getting a little bit of gap. And in here we've got a small amount of gap right down the center or just offset a little bit below center. Not a real big deal, uh, but with the shape that we're going to try and attain finishing this airplane, that wouldn't totally uh, be sanded true once we feather out the bottom. So I'm going to add a narrow strip actually on the outside uh, and we'll just deal with it uh, with the sanding process. One of the ways that that works out just fine is the final step we're going to do here is a really wet coating of resin uh, to try and get the, the glass weave uh, filled in well on the outside. And then with an application of something called peel ply, which by capillary action that will help hold resin uh, out beyond the, the depression areas of the weave of the cloth and help it be uh, better filled with resin and give a little bit smoother surface uh, to start with. Another side benefit is if once it does cure up and you remove it and you even start sanding, if you have a real low depression uh, in some areas, then maybe you want to go back and just add some other little pieces of glass cloth into, or for adding filler, that will be a pre-prepped surface that you can rebond to without having to do any sanding or, or other prep work to it. Whether that be using some uh, micro balloons mixed with resin as a filler, um, auto body filler, uh, what, whatever you choose. Um, it'll leave a surface texture texture that's, that's ready to um, start adding uh, other fillers to. And what it's going to do for us is with us adding our little strip that's going to, by capillary action, kind of flow resin out off of that to where it'll just about form, uh, finish form, uh, the, the shape for us, even though it's going to have just a narrow raised strip there. So we'll get some resin brush, brushed on here, our last strip, and then we'll show you applying the peel ply. Okay, so we've got all of our fiberglass on. We added our little strip down the middle here that I talked about that should fill that out the rest of the way for us. And now we've done one really wet brush coat of resin. Uh, sh you can probably see it looks kind of shiny uh, to try and really fill the weave and coat the outer surface. And now this is where our masking tape along the edge comes into play for us because ideally uh, to simplify the sanding when we first start doing that we want uh, tape that's underneath the masking tape right now to have no resin on it so it makes it really easy to see as we sand down to that level when the sandpaper first starts touching that tape and the way to do that is to not be sanding through any resin or particularly any fiberglass uh, cloth uh, and that's what uh, this tape is going to do for us. So before we go any further I'm going to get the masking tape pulled off and that will leave us hopefully undisturbed glass cloth but dry underneath. Have to come back and get that a little bit. Now you can see it's pulling a little bit of threads because it was just a little bit bridging onto there. I'll just bring those back. Okay, so we're ready to apply the peel ply now. 
Uh, peel ply, it's sold as a composite supply under that name. Basically what it is is Dacron fabric. If you know somebody that does a lot of uh, covering on fabric airplanes, you can get some scraps from them. It'll work just fine. Exact same thing for the most part. Uh, but otherwise, you, you can uh, order at the same time that you're getting your, your other fiberglass supplies, resin, that type of thing, the, the same suppliers sell it. And it's basically just laying it in place, and right away you'll see, by capillary action, it'll start to pull resin into it. Now what we want to do is try and get it to totally wet out where the fiberglass is. But if possible, avoid using a lot of pressure where it squeezes resin along the edge out onto the tape. So I'm going to work it just a little bit. And we want the white to go away just like with the fiberglass cloth. Then we know that it's fully saturated and it's drawn resin up out of the the texture the weave of the cloth and it'll give us a a nicely filled surface that'll be ready to start sanding on <laughs> 